Las Vegas is bathed in neon light 24-7 as casinos vie to grab the attention of pedestrians and astronauts alike. But what happens when neon signs wear out their welcome? Many will find a retirement home at the Neon Boneyard. And if they're lucky, they might just have a high wattage comeback in their future. Welcome. Hi. Tell us where we are. We are at the Neon Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. Isn't it called the Neon Boneyard? It's the Neon Museum and Boneyard. Signs don't come here to die, and it's definitely not a graveyard. They're alive. They're very much alive. A lot of these are from the, the real heyday of Vegas, back in the 50s, right? 50s and 60s, but we have a mix of signs. Our oldest sign is from the 30s. Our newest sign is from several years ago. This part of the collection really focuses on old Las Vegas, uh, Fremont Street, which was really Las Vegas' Main Street. Binion's Horseshoe, the Golden Nugget, really classic places. This was from a place called the China Grill. We thought she was just such a, a beautiful example of a figurative sign that we wanted to give her a home. Figurative with a capital F. We date the sign from the 30s. This sign, it just says cocktail, steak, and chicken, but that's all. Keep it simple. It's all you really, yeah, it's all you really need to know. That's what I really live on is cocktail, steak, and chicken. That's really... You don't really need any. Who needs vegetables? Mm -mm. I love this guy. It's like Paul Bunyan playing pool. Absolutely. This is our pool player, also affectionately known as the mullet man. This is called the happy shirt. I think some of the greatest signs really in our collection belong to small local businesses like the pool player and especially dry cleaner signs. They tended to be very playful. It's making me happy. It, he does his job very, very well. What is that called? That's from the Aladdin. Uh, the Aladdin. So that's the second lamp. That lamp is from the 70s. It must have been amazing to see when it was originally lit up. Absolutely. Well, the Stardust, I mean, really one of the greatest signs ever designed. The innovation in, in design and and fabrication are just, you know. Uh, very Jetsons, you know? Well, and you know, which came first? This did. Just Enough said. Oh, here's the Sahara. Really a fabulous sign. Really a, kind of one of the stars of the show here at the museum. And yet you can't forget about Ming the Merciless over here. <laughs> this is actually the Coin Castle King. He needed to step away from the buffet, though. Let's be honest. He's got quite a gut there. <laughs> oh, he's jolly. What is the value of some of these things? They've got to be pretty valuable. I mean, they're vintage signs. To me, they exceed any, any numerical value, you know. They're priceless. They're priceless, absolutely. Signs that we have restored and installed as public art in the city. They are meant to be experienced the way in which the signs originally were. You don't think neon's going out of style? I think it'll evolve how it's used, and of course I hope it's, it's always used because there's nothing like it. If you don't have time to visit the Neon Boneyard, wander over to Fremont Street, where many of the restored signs are gratefully glowing.